Hello, everybody, and welcome into my latest live broadcast. Today, it is the 5th of March. It's Tuesday, 2024. As a reminder, for many of you, you'll be moving your clocks up an hour this weekend. As a result, the show will be starting an hour later for you, but the same time for me. I always start the show at 1 o'clock Phoenix time, and Phoenix does not honor daylight saving time. Never has, as far as I know, never has. So, I continue to do my shows at 1 o'clock Phoenix time, which will be 1 o'clock Pacific time and 4 p.m. Eastern. And the first time we'll do that will be this coming Monday. So are we ready? It's coming. All right. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. And also, thanks to our friends at Minisform who have sent us. Well, this is quite the machine. If you recall... We looked at the HX77G a little while back, which was this little mini PC designed for gaming. Now, of course, anytime you get a mini computer that's designed for gaming, you can use it for video editing and other intense tasks that can also be, uh, not necessarily, but include uh, graphical intense things from video editing to uh, 3D rendering, 3D modeling. Now, <clears throat> compared to a full-size desktop, you're not going to get that kind of power. But what you're able to get out of a little tiny box here might be way more than you need. And furthermore, it might just blow your mind, especially for the price. Now, we're going to talk about this today. We're going to get it out of the box, turn it on, and show you what it's like. And then also um, uh, answer any questions you might have on it. Uh, thank you to our friends over at Acronis for sponsoring us this year and offering you guys a discount code. So if you need some backup software, Acronis makes it easy. We'll be bringing them on the show throughout the year to explore the product and uh, learn more about it together. And if you've missed any of those shows, just do a search for Acronis, A-C-R-O-N-I-S, here on YouTube for my channel. And you'll find a number of walkthroughs and click-by-click -click, uh, how-tos on how to set up your own backup very easily without a, a whole lot of... Uh, without a whole lot of preparation. Just follow along with us like a cooking show and you'll have your own backup made. It's very affordable and the discount is for you guys only and it'll be available, that discount, throughout this year. Speaking of which, our friends at Instant House Call. I've been living off Instant House Call the last couple of days in the sense of using it to support my customers. Oh my gosh, I think I was on it about five hours yesterday. It is a lifesaver and extraordinarily affordable. So if you're somebody like me and you help people with their computers remotely, uh, try out Instant House Call because look, both Acronis and Instant House Call or any other product that, we, that I talk about all has free trials. Nobody's trying to rip you off. Nobody's trying to tie you into a contract you can't cancel. I don't do business with people like that. At the same time, I'm not gonna twist your arm and do the hard sell. I just want you to try it. See for yourself. Is it everything I said it was? <clears throat> Take advantage of the coupon and save some money. You don't like it? Well, that's fine too, but you won't know if you don't like it if you haven't tried it and it's completely safe and the trials are fully functioning. All right, so uh, links for them are in our video notes below the video and thanks and shout out to them for helping support us throughout this year. It's going to be a tough year. A uh, shout out to our friend Peter Laycock. Peter sends a very generous Amazon gift card and says he'll be joining us later. Peter, thank you so much. Buster, I should say, for your extraordinary and um, continuous support. And same with Frankie B. I see Frankie B in the chat. Another, another extraordinarily helpful supporter here. So we can remain independent, review the products we want to review, and be honest about how we review them the way we want to review them. Now, if you're new, I've been a PC computer technician professionally nonstop since 1991. I don't want to become some spokesman for a company that's going to tell me what I can review and what I'm allowed to say and when I have to do it or I don't get paid. No, thank you. I'd rather talk to you the way I talk to my customers. Do I like this product? Do I recommend this product? Do I think the product is good value? Should you run from it? I treat all of my viewers no differently than my customers. I have a very high uh, uh, liability rate if I misguide people or if I rip people off. 
I could be homeless because I'm my only employee and I've been doing this over 30 years. So uh, one thing I can tell you is things are always changing and what we do today is not what we were doing 10 or 15 years ago, let alone 30 years ago. But the foundation of it's mostly been the same. It's a computer, it's running Windows, and it's incredible how small they've gotten them. Incredible. Uh, not to mention how big and light monitors have become. It used to be these big glass CRT monitors that were very expensive, very fragile, and very difficult to dispose of when they went bad or were replaced. We're living in good times. And I think you'll agree once you see what today's HX100G from Minis Forum offers. A shout out to everybody in the chat. And let's take a look. Paul said he's tired of mini PCs. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's like saying you're tired of microwave food. It ain't going away. It's just going to get more and more. This is the way it's going. And if you don't like it, you're going to be left behind. You're going to be the guy with the PC that everybody wants to come over to the house and see because nobody's got one anymore. There's no reason for most people to have a full-size PC. However, in business, there still is. But for most home users, it's... But everybody's got their preferences. You're allowed to like what you like. But if you ignore the industry trends and you choose to walk away, you'll be left behind. And, you know, if you don't mind being left behind, that's fine. But uh, we're only getting started with mini PCs. If you're tired of it now, just wait. The whole definition of PC is changing. As we live and evolve, would you want anything less? I mean, come on. Evolution, I think, is always good. And of course, as they continue to develop them, they just get better, faster, cheaper, smaller, quieter. They run cooler. They're, I don't know how you could not like them. I really don't get it. But to each their own. And, you know, I get it. I don't do many PC reviews every day on this channel. And, and to be honest, it's been, I did one last week. I did one this week. And I don't think I did one for three weeks after that. So to tell me that you've seen too many PC reviews on this channel in five weeks and that's got you sick of it, I'd say your tolerance is a little low. But, you know, to each their own, you're all welcome here in the chat. And uh, I appreciate your feedback. So let's say uh, hello, everybody. There's Marlena in the chat and Jonathan and Tim Teal. I see Dom Parada, 3D Everything, and Ben Laird saying hello. There is uh, Andy Kane and Mark Gaines and PSC Computers Missouri in the chat saying hello. Along with Steve Chappelle and John Rogers, our friend Frankie B. And uh, it's good to see everybody in there. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Let's take a look at what's, uh, what's in the box here. And then we'll take a look at Minis Forum's website to see how they're describing this. So first of all, it's a little bit bigger than you know some of the tiny little pcs like the em 790 or 780 that thing is like a quarter the size of this maybe smaller but the bigger you can get them the more stuff that the more features you can add so such as uh, a discrete graphics card this has a discrete graphics card in it we open it up we've got the notification we've got the instructions and then right in here if i lift this out you're going to see a very familiar carbon fiber-esque case because it's pretty much the same case Minis Forum has used on the HX77G, but the guts have been upgraded significantly. Uh, what are you going to do, right? I mean, it's the same if you bought a... If I showed you a computer that I built last year in a computer that I showed this year, how many times have I reused a Corsair 200R case and went from a 5th gen to a 13th gen, quite frankly, all in the same case. So that's effectively the same thing. Uh, we have a mo mon monumental <laughs> power supply here because we need to power that discrete graphics card, right? So we need more power. And then in the box remaining, we have a standard PC power cable that's going to plug into the brick. We have a regular HDMI cable, which I use my own, but it's there for you to use. And then we have this stand, which is an optional stand, just like we did with the HX77G, where you just pop this bad boy on there and, and then it sits 
it sits upright. But you can lay this flat if you want to. You don't even have to put the stand on it. But the stand does uh, require a screwdriver and it does uh, screw into there to secure it so it won't fall off. All right, now, I am going to move this around. Let's put this right there. Oh, you know what? I just realized I left all this stuff out. Let's just move that over here. That'll be fine. Um, let's take a look at Minis Forum's website and let's see how they're promoting the Minis Forum HX 100G and what the price is and what you're gonna get for the money. So let me jump over here. Here we go. So you'll notice there's three different models, the HX99G, HX77G, and HX100G. So these were earlier models last year. The 100G is this year's model. It appears they're sold out of last year's model. And uh, it looks like what they've got left is exactly what we're going to show you today. It shows we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7840HH HS with a Radeon 6650M. That's the 100G, okay? Now, the 99G is this one here. So it looks like they have two of them. That's the 99. Oh, that's not letting me click on it. They might be... Okay, it's a brand new product and it's quite possible. It's sold out. However, we can always fall back to Amazon and it shows uh, $220 off of this price or the Ryzen 7 7840HS, 32 gigs, DDR5, that's fully upgradable. One terabyte SSD, fully replaceable with a second M.2 slot. PCI, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Wi-Fi <laughs> 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, with two HDMIs, two USB 4s, and two PCIe slash SATA SSD, with uh, five USB 3.2s. All right, but I, I much prefer to go to Mini's forum site and you know get it straight from them. You, they do sell a bare bone version of this, meaning you could put in your own RAM, your own storage in your own operating system. And I like that Mini's forum offers this choice for many of our more power users. But rest assured, for a few dollars more, when they put it in, it'll cost you less money, but you may not get a level of parts that some of you are so very, very demanding about. But if you've got the money to back up your demands, all the power to you. So this is all about the 99G, which we're not looking at today. So let me just find my way around here for just one second. Right up here, showing the 99G in specs. Where's our 100G? I'm going to guess it's not showing it to us because... Wait a minute, let's try that. No. Sometimes Minis Forum has asked us to hold off because of uh, inventory issues. And then, you know, we've been holding this off. We were holding it off because of the Chinese New Year for two weeks. And then, you know, I go to do this today and I just now realize they don't even have it in stock. However, where's what we're going to do? We're going to just take a look at the 99G specifications, because much of it's the same. And then afterwards, we'll go through what some of the differences are. So for example, the CPU and uh, the GPU are gonna be different on this. The, the CPU on this, just to be clear, is a seven, Ryzen 7 7840, and the graphics card is a 6650. All right, so the, the graphics card will be the same. The unit they sent me has 32 gigs of RAM, DDR5. That's two sticks of 60. The storage they've included in the sample unit here is a one terabyte storage. And they sent me a US plug adapter. They do have a, a Canadian, Hong Kong, Australian, UK, Japan, or European plug choice when you order. Now, if we continue scrolling down, a lot of this information will be the same. Again, we've got GDDR6, eight gigs of RAM, very fast RAM on the discrete graphics card. Different processor. Uh, the breakout here is identical. They've just changed the parts on the circuit board between one model and the other. 
Windows 11 Home comes pre-installed. It is 22H2, but uh, I do update it before the show, and 23H2 was offered and installed just through Windows Update. It is 4800 speed DDR5. It does support dual 4K and dual 8K displays. The two HDMI ports are going to give you two 4Ks, and the two USB 4, USB 4 ports give you two 8Ks. The uh, body of this case is pretty interesting. It's a 75% carbon fiber material. I love carbon fiber. The thermals are, Mini's Forum is just mastered thermals. Their computers are always very quiet, and this one is no different. Ignore the CPU stuff because we're not using any of those. A little bit more about the uh, discrete graphics, the 6650M. This will play AAA titles at 1080, just so you know. There are some sample frames per second. Uh, we can run four displays at 4K at the same time. So even though I said, you know, the HDMI doesn't support 8K, but the uh, USB 4 supports DisplayPort in 8K, well, you could do 2.4K and 2.8K or 2.4K and 2.4K all at the same time. Or anything less than those numbers. <laughs> Upgrade friendly. Yes, it's very, very easy to get into this thing. If you do want to upgrade your RAM and your storage, I'll show you how to do that. Or even your Wi-Fi card. Everything else is pretty much soldered down. You're not going to be changing a CPU or the graphics card. That's all soldered in and not serviceable. But then that's the kind of stuff that rarely would ever break anyway. Uh, they've got two fans in here that are very quiet and copper tubing for efficient heat dissipation. And then we'll take a look at the ports here. We've got uh, Generation 1 Type-A USB 3.1. Actually, I have to check on this one if it's still 3.1. We've got a headphone jack and a uh, microphone jack. I like that they separate those. Some people don't like if you want to plug your speakers in, you're plugging them into the front of the case. But you can always get USB speakers to plug them in the back if that bothers you. We have a USB uh, 4 port. This is not, see, this is a little different on this model. This is going to be USB 4. Pretty sure, I think. <laughs> Let me take a look just to make sure I'm not lying to you. Well, there are three USB Type C ports on this. Does this one show three of them? It doesn't. So this is where we're going to see some differences, right, on the ports. And so for that, let me go back over to Amazon and see what the ports are. Um, two USB 4s. Five USB 3.2s. Okay, so what that tells me is all of the Type A ports, there are one, two, three Type A ports in the back, one up in the front, and a USB-C in the front. So that means that front USB-C has got to be USB 3.2. That's good. That means they're all 3.2, and the two little ones in the back are 4. That's easy to remember. just want to look through these specs. All right, let's go back over to camera one here. Hey, there's Planet Cryos with a $2 super chat. He says, hello. Welcome in, my friend. Thing one says, hello. And uh, just looking to see if I've missed anything. Well, I've been reading the screen out loud. Okay, so let's power it up. Enough talk. We've got a round uh, four pin power cable. Now, once again, I'm not a fan of not having the name of the manufacturer on the power supply. The power supply is made by an entirely different company. This is pretty common standard practice, and it's very easy to get these things mixed up. Now, because this one's a four pin, that seems unlikely. 
when they're the round barrel connectors, they can fit into, you know, a hundred different devices and they'll blow up 99 of them. So it's important, I think, that you label them, whether you've got a label maker or a Sharpie marker. I use a silver Sharpie marker on a black power adapter. And I typically find a smooth place, maybe on the side, and just write an example like HX100G on the side of it. Doesn't have to look pretty. It's going to sit on the floor behind a desk. But if these two things ever get separated in a move or something like that, I need to know where this went with confidence before I plug it in and blow up a, an $800, $900 computer. Now, let's go ahead and plug in the network. And let's plug in the video. And I need a keyboard and a mouse, which I have down here. And let's see what it's like. USB dongle. Let's plug that in right up here. We turn that on. And we'll go to my HDMI input right here. Oh, okay. Those of you paying close attention will say, Kerry, you didn't give this any power. Well, to those of you, I say, you have a sharp eye. Well done, Padawan. It will need power. It doesn't run off my good feelings. Now, let's try it one more time. We're going to give that up. See, the blue light came on that time. That makes a difference, doesn't it? And then in a second, we should see the post. There is our post screen. And in a few more seconds, we should be at the desktop. There it is. Now, just to take a look uh, at the desktop, let's poke around here for a minute. <clears throat> the crystal disk mark info on the one terabyte included drive is obviously Gen 4, not a high-end Gen 4. But again, that's not typical for machines to be sold with high-end parts that are pre-built. Generally speaking, the people buying pre-built are people that want something moderately priced, and the people that want extraordinary typically get computers custom made. Just saying, there's a price difference. Now, uh, if we look under the system properties, I'll right click on the start menu and go to system. You'll see we've got the Ryzen 7 7840HS with Radeon 780M graphics. 32 gigs of DDR5 is installed in two sticks of 16, and it's Windows 11 Home. All Minis Forum PCs ship with Windows 11 Home. They started that back around November. I'm not sure why, but they said universally across the board, no matter what, if you're going to get it with Windows, it's going to have Windows 11 Home. Personally, it makes total sense to me, unless you need to sign into a server, or unless you're an unusual home user, there's no reason for your average ordinary consumer to need anything from Windows 11 Pro or Windows 10 Pro. They are enthusiasts or business class uses only, and they do not make your computer run any better. So it's not like the old days of uh, Windows 7 where certain limitations were lifted. There are no limitations lifted. Windows 11 Home is exactly the same as Windows 11 Pro, except for like BitLocker and the ability to log into a server or run virtual machines and all the enthusiast home lab stuff or business stuff you might need to log into a server at work. I'm sure that's not most of you, but I do know a lot of enthusiasts watch YouTube videos. But if you're not considered an enthusiast, uh, please don't, don't allow yourself to be misled and misinformed by uh, information that is way overrated, in my opinion. Now, if we take a look at the device manager, just out of curiosity, I'm wondering what kind of networking we've got in this bad boy. And we'll go over here to network adapters. I can't see it that far away. So excuse me a minute when I walk up to the screen. We have an Intel i226. Nice. So we have a name brand, two and a half gig wired ethernet adapter and a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E wireless adapter. 
All right. So we're not cheaping out on parts here. And on top of that, you'll see we've got the AMD Adrenaline software installed right down here in the corner. I did make sure to update that before we went live today with the current version. And if you have an AMD graphics card, you definitely want the AMG Adrenaline software to get the best performance, stability, and, and uh, security and features performance out of the graphics card. Now, this machine is fast, and I mean fast. We can open up web pages and you know, again, my internet here is slow, so it's not exactly the best example to give you. And it, it, it's quiet. I don't even hear this machine at all. Now, I'm sure if I were to push it hard and maybe run some games on it, I might see, or rather hear a little bit, but it's really, really quiet. So it's also a little bit larger than most mini PCs. And um, let me go back over to camera one. And let me see before I shut it down and open it up. Do you guys have any questions for me while I have it on? You want me to check anything? Nick Poverman mentions you can buy a USB to audio adapter. He's got several of them, he says. Yes, yeah, so it's not like you're forced to have, your, to have to plug the speakers in the front. Andy wants to know if the USB 4 are color coded. The USB 4 are in the back. They are not color coded. They are just USB Type C ports. But the two in the back, both are USB 4 equally. And the one up front is USB 3.2, just like the color coded USB A ports are all blue, meaning they're USB 3. In this case, 3.2, same thing as far as the color blue goes. Jeremy says, define unusual home user. Uncommon. I would suppose uncommon would have been a better choice of words. Meaning they use the computer in a way that most other home users do not. More of an extremist or um, unusual ways that they use the computer not typical not typically found in your average home computer users activities uh, let's see kelly stewart says good afternoon carrie i'm back i don't know how long i'll be here i'm having a hack attack on facebook i sent you a surprise on your phone Hey, Kelly, I hope you're going to start feeling better soon. You had a, a slip and fall there in the ice. Yeah, Facebook was down earlier today. But Facebook, I think Instagram, Twitter, it was down for tens of thousands of people this morning. You can Google that if you want to read the story. It's across all the major news networks. Uh, I've had a couple of customers reach out to me and ask me why they can't sign into their Facebook. And that was in the morning and I hadn't gotten to my email yet. And then when I did finally respond to them, they said, it's working now, never mind. So, you know, there's nothing I could have done other than tell them, read the news. So if you're experiencing that or you haven't, but you're curious what happened, it's all in the news today. Uh, let's see. Frankie B says, that looks like a small form factor. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, to me, small form factor is like mini ITX. And this wouldn't even fit a mini ITX power supply. It's not wide enough. I don't know. Um, there are a number of smaller case designs that have some really obscure naming convictions. But I, I wouldn't call this small form factor. Extra small form factor? I don't know. It's a little bigger than a typical mini PC for sure but not as big as the nooks that will take a video card in them that they still consider to be mini PCs or those actually are considered small form factor. Now that I think about it, if you can put a graphic card in it. Uh, oh, the phone. Kelly wants me to check the phone. 
Oh, right on. Kelly sends an Amazon gift card for 50 bucks. I sa he says, I hope you get this. I had to stop a Facebook hacker, but I'm back. If you turn on two-factor authentication on anything you sign into on the web, so if you're signing into Facebook, your Gmail account, your YouTube account, your Facebook account, your Twitter account, Instagram, anything that you have a login offers you two-factor. So what's two-factor? Two-factor means if somebody gets your name and uh, if somebody gets your email address and your password because it was leaked from a site that didn't have good security and you use the same email address and the same password to log into other sites, they can log in as you. The second factor outside of name and password is to send a message either to your email or to your phone with a code. And that code is only valid for about 90 seconds and you never ever tell anybody that code. If they say, I'm tech support, I'm gonna send you a code, I want you to read that code to me, do not do that. They are scamming you. They are socially engineering. They're playing you. It even says, do not give this code to anybody and people still give it to the person on the phone because they think the person on the phone was legit. No one legit will ever ask you for that code ever. That's how serious that code is. So here's what happens. Someone's trying to log in as me, right? And I intentionally left a, a, a I know that the password I was using was leaked, but I kept using it because I wanted to see, am I popular enough to be hacked? Yes, I am. But here's the thing. As soon as they did it, my phone beeped and said, are you trying to log in from China? And I said, no. And they said, okay, we'll take care of it. I love two-factor. And then I decided, that was a little scary and I'll go ahead and change my password now. But I was just curious and so I left it. And um, the great thing about two-factor is you may get notifications on your phone that you didn't ask for. You'll get notifications that say, here's the six digit password for you that you requested. I didn't request a six digit password. And it'll often say, if this wasn't you, just ignore this. But at that point, you know someone's trying to hack you. And as long as you ignore it, they will not ever be successful. But it's nice to know when it's going down and it's nice to know that they're being blocked. Every time you get that code and you don't do anything with it, you are stopping them dead in their tracks. So now if you go to Facebook or whatever the site is that's sending you the code and you enter the code, you might be inadvertently letting them in. So don't act on it. If, you're, if you aren't trying to sign in somewhere and it says, I'm gonna send you a code, then you're not expecting to get a code. So if you get a code from anywhere that you didn't ask for, ignore it. You might want to store it aside just in case there's any legal ramifications down the road. I mean, Samsung phones now have the option to auto delete us the, the passcodes so that you don't have to manually delete them. So if I want to log into one of my accounts, credit card company, bank, etc., they always send me the code. I got to have my name. I got to have my password and I got to have my code. And then I'm in a habit of deleting the codes, but now the Samsung phone is intelligent enough to know that's a temporary six digit code message and I will delete it automatically in 24 hours if you would like. And while you're setting up the phone, you can say, yes, please do this or no, please don't. But the codes are invalid after about 90 seconds. So it's, I don't see the point in holding on to them. And if you build up a stack of them, it's hard to know, was the one on top the new one? <laughs> or the one on the bottom, the new one, which, which is the one I'm, I can't remember which one's the old one. So by clearing them out and leaving it blank when one comes in, it's just that one and it's good for about 90 seconds, sometimes three minutes, but no more than that. And you'll never ever be hacked again. It'll just put an end to it. Unless you give that code out to somebody. All right. Nick Boverman says he's got two-factor on everything. Kelly says he had two-factor on. Well, I don't think they can get in if you have two-factor on. 
But with Facebook being down earlier, maybe while well, Facebook was down, something was vulnerable, which might not have been on you. Marco says, guys, today is Mitch's birthday. That is correct. Good on you, Marco, for remembering. Happy birthday to our good friend Mitch Morrison, who turns 172 today. He looks good for his age, though, doesn't he? Matt Olaf said it. It's nice to end the day with a live broadcast for you, from you. Today, I celebrated my 70th birthday. Wow, so Matt Olaf and Mitch Morrison share the same birthday. How cool is that? How cool is that? Planet Cryo says, with a $2 super chat, I can confirm Meta was down for Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, Twitter was down too. It's in the news. Um, Dave Bat said he switched on two-factor on his Synology as well. Simple to do. Yep, everybody offers it. Unfortunately, they don't force people to use it. That's where the problem is. People aren't intelligent enough to know what it is and how important it is. And then they don't use it until after their identities are stolen, their accounts are hacked, and then they're educated about it, and then they do it after. So I hope you're not in that group. If you're here, you, you, should, you should know the importance of two-factor authentication. Marlena says, happy birthday, Mitch, and Matt Solov. A lot of us Pisces, and Mara's is in two more days. So there you go. A lot of births in the first week of March. Look, I've been here the whole time, I swear. It wasn't me. <clears throat> Any questions about the HX100G? Will I have it on? Otherwise, I'll shut it off. We'll get the overhead camera on. We'll see what my battery life will be like this time. Mara found some settings that might be draining the batteries when the cameras are off, such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which apparently remain active even when Sony cameras are turned off. So we're trying a little experiment by charging up the batteries and letting the cameras sit a few days and see if we're still at 100% or if we've dropped down to 60%. This is what they usually do. I wouldn't think that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth would be on when the camera is off, but apparently, according to the research Mara did, with Sony cameras, you need to put them in airplane mode if you don't want the Wi-Fi on, and you need to turn off Bluetooth. Will that make a difference? We're going to find out. Mitch Morrison says, I'm going to see Toto twice this month. Right on. You know, um... You know what? Hold, hold on a second, guys. I, I have to go to the other room here because is Toto playing here? I'm confused. I want to I wanna look this up because uh, I thought, didn't that band break up or something? Hold on a second. Where I saw something about this. Uh... Oh, oh, okay. So <clears throat> let's do this. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. <clears throat> I have to step over here for a second. Let's plug this bad boy in. And... I gotta use the right mouse, don't I? Uh, let's see.
I'm, I'm biding my time waiting for any questions to come in on the HX100G before I shut it down and take it apart. But also at the same time, uh, I wanted to try this and see if this works. So bear with me. I'm going to turn off camera one for a second. And I'm going to turn off the HDMI input for a second. And I don't. So I want to show that I know Mitch knows who this is. And what I want to do is because um, we're live here, right? I wasn't actually planning on doing this. But what I want to do, if this will work, OK, uh, and I can get audio on it. <laughs> That's my second challenge. Uh, where is my audio? I'm going to try one more time and see if I can get audio on this thing. Is that? That's not playing any audio, is it? Hmm. I've done something wrong. Hmm. Found it. Okay, guys. Hey, Mitch, it's Leland Sklar. I was talking to Carrie and I hear you've got a birthday coming up, the big 6-6. Six, six. Still a kid, I'll tell you. You, you, you youngsters, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, like it's so weird at this point. But I understand also that you are a massive Toto fan, as am I. I mean, I've known those guys since before they formed Toto. And uh, I started working with Lukather when he was 19 years old. And uh, I feel so fortunate that I've had a chance to record with them and also did, you know, have, having done two tours with the guys. Um, it was really a, a joyous experience. I, if the opportunity comes along, I'd love to work with them again. But uh, I stay in touch with them and I'm totally digging the effect, which is Trevor Lukather's new band with Nick Collins, uh, Phil Collins' son. So it's a, the dynastic thing. It keeps going on and on. But there's a lot of good music in all those people. But Toto, it's a whole other ball game. Those guys are just really amazing. I love them dearly. Um, but this is really all about you. So what do you do for somebody's birthday other than happy birthday to you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mitch. Happy birthday to you, my dear friend, I wish you all the very best. Have a fantastic birthday. You know, get together with family, friends, you know, good food, whatever you want to do for that. Maybe listen to some Toto and, uh, and just have a fabulous time. It's your special day, so go for it and have fun. So, again, happy, happy birthday. And maybe our paths will cross once again on the road and maybe at a Toto concert. So, take care, all. All right. I'm assuming the audio went through correctly that time. Happy birthday to Mitch Morrison from Leland Sklar. 
And if you don't know who he is, well, you've probably never seen a lot of bands perform live from Toto to Phil Collins to, oh my gosh, the guy's played in so many bands. <laughs> Mitch Morrison says, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, how cool is that? So just a little something to let Mitch know that we're thinking of him. He's always uh, up for joining us on those Friday builds. Takes my abuse, and so the least I can do is, you know, uh, show him a little something of my appreciation. So I hope, hope Mitch enjoyed that. Mitch says he met him once in person on his birthday when he was playing with Toto. There you go. Now, onwards and upwards. I don't see any, any questions on this machine, so I think now we can start taking it apart. I have stalled. I've stalled. And um, yeah, I'm just scrolling back, just double checking because I don't want to shut this off and turn, I have to turn it back on again because I missed something. We are live. There's no editing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's turn this off. So the way I'm going to do that is go back to the HDMI input on here. And then, of course, do the standard uh, power off procedure that we all know and love. Go down here. Shut down like so. And then we're going to go back over to camera one. And I'm going to go on to camera two. So camera two takes me a minute to set it up because I don't like to have the cables dangling over my head when I'm broadcasting. And potentially falling into the shot can be quite distracting to content that I'm making. So I take a cable and kind of wrap it up here where you guys can't necessarily see it. See what I'm saying? It gets in the way. Then I'll plug it in right down there. And then as far as... Um, getting the camera straightened out. I need to adjust it uniquely for every time we do this because the different sizes of the devices we're looking at, you know, they're always different. So the camera then has to be customized in a position that is unique for the content. So it's not like I can lock it in one place and say, you know, it's good forever. Now, in theory, if I did everything right, <laughs> didn't quite hide that cable. But if I did everything right, we should be now on the, what do we call this, the close-up camera? Well, we got a nice picture of the floor. I got to bring it way back. I underestimated that a lot. So bear with me for a second. We'll make these adjustments live. I'll move my keyboard out of the way. And we're going to unplug all of our cables from the back, including the uh, front port USB cable dongle I use for the keyboard and mouse. And the mouse has a neat little holder for that magnetic holder right there, so I don't misplace it. Now, to open this, you'll see this side. In fact, we could probably zoom in just a little bit here. It should be on autofocus. It's on to autofocus. There it goes. Um, side that says minis forum. I don't think this is the side we get into. I've never done this before. I mean, I think I did it on the 77G, but that was a while ago. This side, this side has rubber feet. Now, you know, Minis Forum likes to put the screws under the rubber feet. So how much you want to bet? Now, see, this is what I don't like. The tape is, half of the tape is still on the, uh, on the case itself. So I'm going to take it off from this side instead. In fact, I think there's only two screws. So uh, hmm. let me go this way. Now I got the tape stuck to the rubber foot don't just tear this tape off because um if the sticky stuff sticks to the case and not to the rubber foot you might have a difficult time replacing it but you could also just lift up the corners 
just enough to get to the screws, right? So you don't necessarily have to remove the rubber foot entirely, but just about that far back. And then we're going to use, <coughs> use a regular old uh, Phillips number one here. There's one screw. Okay. Now there's no pull handle on this. There's no real clear way to separate this, but I guess if you leave the rubber foot on it, maybe that will. <laughs> nope, that's not going to do it. So probably need, I would guess, some kind of a spudger, a guitar pick, a credit card, something that you could use. Um... Those folks at iFixit that make the PC toolkits, they make a really nice spudger. This one's metal, so it can gouge. Be careful with it. I'm trying to figure out where this comes up at, if it's on the edge. Or is it the whole, this is the whole lid? I'm not sure. Bear with me for one second as I try and figure out how this opens. Doesn't feel like it wants to open that way. It really looks like the center comes out of here. However, I don't see any gap. Um, I'm not a fan of reading the directions. I can see a gap right here. Is that it? Is this all one big piece? I wouldn't think so. Maybe it is. There's no indicator if it's this piece that comes out, the whole top comes out, or if, if it comes out all the way down across this ridge right here. There is definitely a seam here that it could possibly separate from as well. But either way, nothing's going in there simply. I got a feeling I feel like I see something right there. Hmm. I don't want to gouge anything. Um, it is not budging. And I'm just not quite sure, just because of the way the screws are here, if they're just holding down this center accent piece, or if this whole thing is an illusion and it's all one piece. So the other rubber strip, we've, we've uh, pulled the screws out. That's all we did. There's no screw. See, there's a screw here and a screw here. And likewise, there's a screw there and a screw there. And I just did that without, without having to take the rubber foot off. Unless there's a third screw hiding under there. I, don't, I think there's only four. Yeah, there's only four. That's not going to make any difference in whether or not we can pull the lid off because it's the screws that we're holding it down. But, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to teach you that you didn't have to take the foot off, and now I guess I had to prove it to you. So I tried to teach you without doing it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me think here. Let me take a quick look online very very quickly here we'll just take a minute
only because we're live and I want to move it along. Yeah, it, it appears the entire top comes off. But exactly how? Hmm. That remains the mystery. So. Let me take a look. Well, now I know it's not just the middle. It's the entire, this entire thing comes off. Uh, there's got to be a clip somewhere that's holding it in. Sometimes there's a very subtle indentation of where a spudger tool could be uh, placed. A lot of times you can go in at the corners. That's often a safe place to go as you find a corner and you just try to pry it away. There's definitely that's just a piece of tape. See, that's an accent piece. And I pried under it, and it's like a carbon fiber accent piece. And of course, it's just held on with tape, so we can just put that back where it was, because that is not helping. Um, let's see. It's got to be... It's got to be along this seam right here that we've got to be looking for our entry point something to separate need a and again i would focus on the corners in my experience that's usually what's the the clips are often located in corners but what a shame that they did not give us a clear and obvious method to get in here this is a little bit of an unexpected challenge because it seems like you wouldn't even need those screws based on how tight this is and I got a feeling this spudger is just too thin. It's too weak. I think I'm going to need something much more sturdy. Maybe more of a, um, let's see what I have in here. So my concern about using a tool like this is marring it. But I guess we could go maybe towards, maybe towards the back. Maybe a combination of them both. So I don't mar it too much get something started with these thinner more flexible tool and i can see it starting to separate now get the little screwdriver and twist it there it is there it is and we've got clips all along here so maybe pushing in on this would help Okay, so this whole lid comes off, just so we're clear. And I'm going to set it over here. And then we've got this big heat shield here, which is really nice because that helps keep out interference. And we're going to go ahead and take out four screws here, one in each corner. And don't get these confused with the other ones, even though they look identical. I don't want to mix and match here. So we'll take out that one. Yeah, that, that had me sweating a little bit. Now, once we take this piece off, we'll have full access to everything user serviceable. So it is, but with that one exception of getting it unclipped, pretty simple. Now, here's our M.2 right here. M.2. 
This is our RAM modules. They have heat sinks on them. You'll see the sockets are right here for both DDR5 modules. These are 16 gigs each. If you replace them, I recommend these heat sinks go back on your replacements with uh, the double-sided sticky tape that they're using. There's your CMOS battery right there. And what else we got? Wi-Fi adapter right there if you want to go to Wi-Fi 7. Another M.2 right here that goes from here to here. That's if you want to add another M.2 drive. So overall, this is your... Let's do a Star Wars flyover. It'll focus. Okay. Ports. That's for the stand, if you want to put the stand on it. And your front ports. Right there. Phew. Okay. <laughs> All right. Filament on Fire said he had a 99G version of this computer. And he said it felt like he was going to break it. Because the retention tips, the retention clips were really tight. Yep, yep, yep. There's more taunt joining us, says hello. John Clausen says, greetings, Carrie. Do you know if you would do a high-end gaming PC build with an EATX case and dual NVIDIA RTX 3090s and SLI. Well, if this was 10 years ago, SLI is no longer supported and uh, can no longer be used. So unfortunately, SLI is dead. Sorry, guys. Uh, the NVIDIA cards no longer support it. The motherboards no longer include the bridge and the bridges are no longer being sold unless they're older for older graphics cards. I'm not sure what that has to do with a Minis Forum HX100G that we're reviewing. And I would appreciate it if we could stay on topic and, and try and get through a review. But however, uh, I will do my best to answer all legit questions. Ski Man says it's got very clean components and it looks very well designed. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. And on top of that, nothing on the other side is user serviceable. So you'd have no reason to take this out any further with your CMOS battery right there. You know, sometimes they flip the CMOS batteries onto the other side. Plus, you've got a little daughter board right there that you'd have to be mindful of if you're going to take this apart further. But that's your user serviceable part. That's intended to be accessed by the end user. Nothing below that point, however, is uh, intended. Now I got to figure out which direction this went on. I think it went on this way. Yep. So these little brass fittings, they sunk into the hole just a little bit. John Paul Bacon said, would that be the same for AMD's Crossfire? Well, I'll tell you what, John, why don't you Google that and come back and tell me what Google says. Let's go ahead and put this over here. There's another one. So if you wanted to put another NVMe or replace the NVMe with something larger and faster because you didn't spend enough money yet, that's where your money goes, right in there. And it will take advantage of it. I mean, it's not, it's not exactly being held back in a major way by the NVMe drive it has. 
it makes a literal difference of milliseconds by going to these bigger drives and your point of diminishing returns increases as the technology gets faster and the prices get higher you start getting less and less for your money but some people are just chasing benchmarks and they're not happy unless their benchmarks tell them they're happy i prefer to decide if i'm happy on my own based on how the machine performs the tasks that i want it to do but i guess i'm weird that way and don't represent the vast majority of content creators and viewers on YouTube, but I do represent the vast majority of customers that I deal with in the real world outside of YouTube, and they make up way more people. So I'm kind of following their lead for that reason because they're the ones who pay my bills. Now, I'm just trying to figure out if this goes on this way or does this go on this way? Oh, it only fits on one way properly. We just push down locks it in place we put the screws back in let's go back over to uh just camera one because i feel like sometimes the close-up camera is a bit much Will it support a Gen 5 drive? I don't believe that it will. I believe it's Gen 4. If you were to put a Gen 5 in there, you would likely run into uh, heat-related stoppages. Uh, Gen 5 drives get extraordinarily hot very, very quickly. So not only are they very, very expensive, you'll need a heat sink on it as thick as this computer if you want it to run reliably. So I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say no, because you'd, heck, you'd have to be a fool to put a Gen 5 drive in here, in my opinion. Just so you could go four milliseconds faster and spend $400 more. It's your money. It's your illusion. But um, you would likely run into some very serious... Um, performance issues. You got to appreciate the irony on that, right? Because the reason you bought it was to go faster. It'll get so hot, it'll go slower. And then you could have spent less, got a Gen 4 drive that ran solid all the way across the board and got way more for your money and better performance for your money. And there we go. It's all put back together, right? And we can plug it back in like this. Yeah, don't underestimate the cooling requirements of a Gen 5 drive. When you're ready to drop that kind of cash on a drive, I hope you're ready to drop a lot more cash on the cooling and maybe even drop some cash on somebody to take care of it for you because if you don't put it in precisely in the right, um, in the right, in the, if you don't put a, a, an effective cooling solution on it and you don't know what you're doing, well, you're going to spend some money maybe th spend three times the time and three times the money than you would have if you just paid somebody to do it for you. So, and in return, you're going to see minuscule differences in actual performance as a result. Once you've accomplished all that, all those obstacles, once you overcome them, the reality of having a Gen 5 drive is very rarely ever a sound investment for anybody, unless you're doing an extraordinarily large amount of tra file transfers over a 10 gig network and you need that kind of performance number actually you probably need a 25 gig network to fully appreciate it so i don't understand what the heck you'd be doing with it that would be worth your time and money and, and that's my opinion you know i try to keep things practical but to each their own and if you put a gen 5 drive in here i'm sure it'll run at gen 4 but then why not just buy a gen 4 for half the price and the same capacity since you're going to get the same speed out of it let me turn it back on, make sure I didn't break anything. Let's turn this on. And let's go back over to our HDMI input and make sure that, hey, we got a post screen. Yeah, I didn't break it. Yay for me. Nick Poverman says the Minisform website said it supports next-gen form factor SATA or NVMe PCIe times 4. 
Times four is different than Gen four. A lot of people confuse that. You could get Gen three times four, Gen four times four, Gen five times four. Don't confuse the multiplier by the generation. All right. Still whisper quiet. It still boots really fast. It does not require any improvement from the end user unless you're somebody who's never satisfied and think nothing's ever done right unless you do it. If you buy this, take it out of the box with the configuration that you ordered, you shouldn't have to do anything to it for a couple of years. But, you know, I don't know you. Maybe you're just one of those people that likes to take apart stuff. But the people who want to get their money's worth out of it, in my opinion, will order it the way they need it. And, uh, and they won't open it unless they have an actual reason to open it. On the other hand, you can order this bare bones. And in that case, you would open it to put in your own RAM and your own storage and your own operating system. And for some of you, that might be what you'd be doing. Um, but I, most people will not do that. It's a very small, I think fewer than 10% of people who order computers order them bare bones. But, you know, there's still people and they, their money's just as good as everybody else's, but the demand for the product is not as high. People don't, most people don't want to mess with that stuff. But just know that you can, and you can upgrade it later. Apart from getting that, that lid unclipped, which was a little bit confusing, now we have it on camera and we can't say we don't know how anymore. That's why I love to share these experiences with you. My first time experience with this product, with my genuine reaction and my genuine thought process, I go through it. So that if you find yourself in a similar but different situation, you could say, well, what would Carrie do? and then go get a hammer. David Collins says, you've done a few of these mini PC reviews. You should show the quality of packaging information. Good night. I unboxed it, right? Were you not here earlier? You just made an assumption I didn't do that? Or did you mean some of my misunderstanding what you're saying? DVR mode is on. You can rewind this video like any video and see what you've missed before accusing me of not doing something. Just saying you could do that if, if you wanted to. John Paul Bacon said AMD's webpage says it's PCIe 4. There you go. Um... Again, uh, Gen 5 really would not benefit you in a case this small. You would have some serious heat concerns. And the performance difference would be minuscule. It would be measurable in milliseconds only. So you'd have a hard time justifying that for any practical purposes other than just an emotional need to have a bigger number, which is very childish in my opinion. It's very immature. But, you know, you're allowed to think that way. I just, I don't have customers that pay me who think that way. My customers want to know what they're getting for the money. And my focus has always been on value. I don't want to put hubcaps on lawnmowers. I just, I won't do it. I won't sell them. I won't talk about them. If people want to do that, knock yourself out. If someone's in a pretty unique situation where they require that sort of setup, they don't need to be looking at stuff like this. They need much more expensive equipment and I'm more than happy to help them. And there's a lot more profit in it for me and it's a lot more satisfying because I can make three times the amount of money selling somebody a system like that than I can selling somebody a system like this. And for the same amount of my time, right? It's sort of like if a waiter is serving you at Wendy's, they bring the food out to your table, there's no tip. But if that same waiter is bringing you the food out to your table at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, they might be going home with a couple grand that night. I'm just saying. The more you're spending, the more service you can experience, a better service, and the more you're going to pay for it. And then whether or not you think it's worth it, well, I mean, more people eat at Wendy's every day than Bruce Chris Steakhouse. So you sort of have the majority, and then you have a, a minority. And, and uh, to each their own.
Shamim says it's a pretty neat mini PC. It can run Red Dead Redemption 2 as well, or quite well. Uh, any other questions for me? We still have some time left in today's show. I've gone through this. My caffeine has kicked in today, so I'm moving pretty quick. <laughs> um, there are some reviews that were done by other content creators that will show actual gameplay. The odds that it's one of the games you're playing is pretty slim, but if you want to see it, um, I'm not going to repeat what these guys have done. There's, a, there's no point. They've already done it. I want to take a look at a more practical purpose behind this machine and how it would be used by regular folks, responsible adults who use their machine to get things done. If you buy a machine for entertainment purposes only, that's okay. I don't mind. But I don't get many service calls from people that say, hurry up, my entire office is down and none of my employees can work and none of my customers can be helped because our entertainment machine went down. It doesn't create any sort of urgency or financial reward or any stability in my business to appeal to that user base. So don't take it personally. It's just, it's impossible to run a business like that for any period of time. <laughs> you could run a business like that for a little while, but you'll soon find there's no work. So um, if I seem like I'm not interested it's because this video channel, this YouTube channel, is an extension of my business. I'm here to show you items that I consider in my business, use in my business, that my customers might need. It is not here to cater to you. And I think that's where some people have mis mis misinformed or sort of have an entitlement that you're supposed to be making these videos for me. I don't know you. Now, if, if some of you, as some of you have, have, have contributed and, and and want to produce the cost of the video and you want to see me do something, well, that's a different story. But I'm showing you actual things I would sell to actual customers that I think are of value and how they would be used in some examples in real world scenarios in my real business every day by my real clients. None of them, not a single one of them plays games. And what's at stake is far more than games. The, the sustainability of their business of their employees, of their customers, rides on the line. And it's very different than riding on the line in Alan Wake 2 or something. It's, it's not real. So I deal in reality. And for the people who wish to avoid it, there are plenty of other YouTube channels, way more that do that than do what I do. So I hope, I hope you understand what my motive is in making the videos because I feel like you just don't see that here on YouTube very often. And so when people request it, I think it's weird that they want me to be just like everybody else when you could literally go to almost any other YouTube channel and watch them play games. Wouldn't this be a nice breath of fresh air to get away from that? It is for me. And you know, play your games, it's great. I don't have any problem with it. I don't have any problem with what car you drive. I don't have any problem with what clothes you wear. I don't have any problem on how much you spend at the grocery store or what your diet is. I don't care. It has nothing to do with me or what my YouTube channel is about. So there's no reason you should feel offended by it. And, uh, you know, this is sort of my lane. I'm just trying to stay in my lane. <laughs> so I hope you're getting that. Uh... Matt Soloff says, thank you all. Good night from Sweden. Hey, Matt Soloff. Thanks for hanging out with us again, my friend. Netfreak says, Carrie, I sent a gift card. Oh, hey, let me check the phone. It's been a couple minutes. Thank you for reminding me. Your support, you know, keeps me from having to become a corporate spokesperson, which I really don't want to do. Or to reduce the number of videos I make down to one or two a month. 
So just so you know, I don't, I don't ask for anything. I simply state if you want to, um, if you want to help, it's appreciated, but it's not expected. But it is very, very appreciated. And I don't see anything yet from you, Netfreak, but I'll thank you for sending it. It can take a few minutes for Amazon gift cards to come through. Thank you to Kelly Stewart. Uh, thank you to Peter Laycock. Thanks to all our friends in blue and all, our, all those gold badges. Those are all members that are supporters here. And without them, most of this content would not exist. And um, otherwise, I'd just be parroting out what a corporation script was, they told me to say. And uh, it wouldn't be me. I'd be an actor. It wouldn't even be a real reality show. And we'd be calling it a review when I've been getting paid, which would be a lie. And then I would be like all the other YouTube, not all of them, but most of the, especially the larger tech YouTube channels that do reviews, those are paid advertisements, guys. If your ad blocker really worked, it wouldn't let you watch those videos. <laughs> They're nothing but big ads with a script, with company approval. Otherwise, they don't get paid. If they don't get paid, they can't pay the staff. If they can't pay the staff, they can't make the videos. If they can't make the videos, they don't have a YouTube channel. This stuff is very simple. Not rocket science how this people aren't working for free is all I'm saying. At least not seven days a week. Somebody might make a video once a week, once a month because they enjoy it. Um, and some people might make a video as a hobby, but it does get expensive. So unless they have... I don't know, a trust fund or some money put away. It's got to get financed somehow. The bills have to get paid. So <clears throat> should be th I don't know if you ever think about that stuff when you watch somebody and you go, how, how is this getting paid for? Even if there's no cost to them doing it, they still have the electric bill and the rent. They got to eat. They got to buy water, sanitation. They, they've got to pay for the things to live. So if they're there making videos all day, where does the money come from that pays all those bills at the very least? Forget the cameras, the lighting. Just talk about their value of their time out of their day. That uh, if they're not making money, where's the money coming from? Hmm. I need to get me a trust fund. Uh, Thomas says, Mitch is the actor and you are not a talking head. I might be a talking head. Same as it ever was. Edward says, my problem is every time I log into Chrome, I have to enter a user email and password. I've tried everything, clearing the cache, reinstalling Chrome, looking in the settings ideas do you have multiple profiles and when you're talking about entering a user email and password enter it for what and is this windows 10 or 11 and has it always been this way or is this something that recently started and if so when did it start is this a desktop or a laptop is this a pre-built or something you built yourself but primarily, apart from needing all of that information, I'd like to know entering a user email and password to what? What is it as the top where it asks for the user and password tells you, is it Gmail? Is it Microsoft OneDrive? What is it? And that is the answer to your question. And it's right in front of you and you're not looking at it. That's what I think. Okay. We have a few more minutes if there's any other questions or if, uh, if Edward wants to follow up with filling in all those empty gaps he left, we'd certainly be happy to help. Andy Kane says, trust fund, we all do. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I need a reason to get out of bed in the morning. If I had a trust fund, I'm not sure I'd have that reason, so. I'm sure it's good for me. I'm sure, just, I keep telling myself that. <laughs> I 
I can't emphasize just how powerful this little box is. I was impressed. If you go back and you watch the uh, Mini Swarm HX77G review I did last year, it was crazy how good the, the graphics were on it for a mini PC, right? You've always got to put that little caveat. And now, by having discrete graphics on it, it's extraordinarily affordable. AAA titles, 1080, no problem. Um, I can't wait to see what they do next year when the year after that. They're only getting better. And if you wait in about 75 more years, it'll blow your mind. Of course, we'll all be dead then. That's why you can't just wait. If you just continually wait for the next best thing, it'll pass you, life will just pass you by. At some point, you've got to say, that's good enough for me. Or I'm going to build a machine with this processor and this video card. At some point, you've got to draw a line. Or you will forever be uh, a spectator as life passes you by. And everything will always get better. No matter what you buy today, something better will be out in a few months. And this will go on to the very day you die. So at some point, you, it's not about having what's best. It's about what's best for you today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. Live in the now. And when you're ready to pull the trigger on that decision, the Minis Forum name brand is a very reputable one with a solid uh, um, review rating with regards to the quality of their builds. The pricing that they have is not like you're buying from Sony. <laughs> you know, the Sony tax. I have to pay the Sony tax because it's got the word Sony on it. Minis Forum is still relatively unknown in the United States. And they are a leader in the mini PC space with some of the most unique designs and offering bare bones versions for those of you that would prefer to put in your own RAM and storage. Very affordable, but you know, don't let me make up your mind. You make up your mind. And the only way you're going to be able to make up your mind is to have one in front of you because your expectations, they're yours and yours alone. And nobody can tell you unless they know you really well what you're going to feel about it. And if you order from Amazon, you have a 30 day return window. And if they say, why are you returning it? You go, cause I want to, that's all. You don't need a reason. Shamim wants to know if this mini PC would be good enough for video editing. Uh, well, there's different levels of video editing, but overall, yes. But if you're going to do some heavy layering along with 4K or 8K video outputs, and you're going to add a lot of overlays, titles, transitions, let's be clear. Any computer will do video editing. The question is, how long will it take to do the job? Will it hesitate as you scrub through the video or will it be very smooth? Well, what is the source video? Is the source video a 4K, eight hour Kerry Holzman live stream? It might choke a little bit on that, but I think it would probably do it pretty good actually. Just might stumble a little bit in the scrubbing. However, if you're doing um, a YouTube short or a TikTok video, it'll run through that like it's not even there. If you're doing 1080 video, it'll run through that like it's not even there. But if you're doing hours and hours and hours of high resolution, multiple track transitions, overlays, effects, it'll still do it, but it's really gonna push the system hard. And for that kind of video editing, they don't make a machine good enough. If anybody's doing regular like Hollywood theater movie editing, they will tell you the machine they use isn't fast enough. And they've always said that the machines can never be fast enough. More, more, more. <laughs> But yes, in general, video editing is easy on this. Put Cyberlink Power Director on there. It's crazy good.
Claudia wants to know what's the most powerful mini PC I've reviewed. Uh, it might be this one. It's hard to say depending on how you define powerful. You can have powerful in lots of different ways. You can have powerful in a way of how small it is or how big it is or how much video it can do or how much processing, CPU processing it can do or how much and how fast of RAM it can hold or how much and how fast of NVMe it can hold. There's no one definition of fast because fast is measured 17,000 different ways unique to each PC user and what they determine to be fast. But it won't make your internet connection any faster. You won't read or type any faster. And at some point, measuring the speed for the point of measuring speed is a pointy, pretty pointless and thoughtless thing to be measuring unless it's very specific to a task that you are interested in wondering how it would perform. And likely, of all the people in the chat room, you're the only one here that is interested in that task. So to just kind of give an overall what's good is really impossible in the industry because what's good for one person is crap for somebody else. But when we talk about average home users and especially those who want to do some gaming and they don't want a PlayStation, they don't want an Xbox, they want a computer, they want to be able to work with it and they want to be able to play with it and they don't want to drop 1200 bucks right there. It's all ready for you and for far less. And you can pick it up and move it around, take it to a friend's house for land parties. It's super easy. Planet Gryos with five bucks says you're still live. We'll take this still live fee from PK. We normally go from about 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. We, I try to keep it around two hours. And I kind of wrapped this up a little bit early, but uh, just looking uh, to see if there's any other questions I can help people with. And I see some folks there in the chat offering help to Edward as well. So Edward, please, if, if you haven't, you know, look at some of the responses there, are some excellent suggestions from our community. As we move into computers with neural processing units or NPU, speed will no longer be managed in gigahertz. S speed will be managed in floating point operations. And the, and the TPUs that are used, um, they could be running at a fraction of the speed and be way, way faster than anything you've ever seen in your life because of the, the um, ah, there's a word for it. It's going to change how we measure performance, and it's going to happen within the next couple of years. And you know, when you say six gigahertz, six gigahertz, what are you talking about? When we move into AI processing and, and neuroprocessing units, um, the way the computer is going to perform is going to be closer to... Um, well, like I said, it'll be uh, floating point up, flops or tops, floating point operations per second. And you won't be looking at gigahertz anymore because that won't make a spit of difference. It'll have to, it'll be the processing tasks. And the processing tasks will be like the equivalent of a 200 megahertz processor. It'll blow your mind. I mean, you went from six to 200 overnight. Yeah, it's going to be sort of like that. But that won't be the measuring point anymore. The measuring point will be how fast you send it a task and it completes it like that. And it'll blow the regular processors we use today out of the water. These are going to feel like they came from the 1960s in about probably less than 10 years. Mark Gaines wants me to check my email. All right. All right, Mark, I will do that. Now, Mark Gaines sent 60 bucks, $60.70 to be precise, in PayPal. Mark joins us from Northern Ireland and has been a regular supporter here. Thank you, Mark. Cheers, Slancha. Thank you. So, uh, a TPU, when we talk about neuro uh, processing, units is a uh I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's right on the tip of my tongue i have to google uh tensor uh, tensor processing 
And tensor processing units are um, a whole different way of thinking. It's changing the way computers process data. And so the measurement by which we process data will change into a completely different format that will be so far superior, you'll wonder how you ever thought these computers were fast. You're going to look back not very long from now, and you're going to say, overnight, these are going to suddenly feel archaic, museum quality. Once uh, you know, new Intel and AMD processors are starting to ship with NPUs, and we're just getting started with this stuff, this is going to make everything different. And it's very exciting to see where it's going because, holy cow, the processor, instead of being this logical thing that just transfer, you know, calculates data like a fast calculator, will instead start using logic. And to give you an example of what I mean, if you were to um, get a computer that was using an NPU and that NPU was developed and tuned along with the operating system. Based on what you're using your computer for, your computer will know, like a chess match, that you are likely going to do this or that next, already do it, so that when you click the button, it's already been done. And that's going to give you an illusion that it's running faster when, in fact, it's using its own logic, its own it's running multiple parallel matrices, matrices. It just parallel all at the same time. And it's saying, if this, then this, if that, then this. And it's making decisions. And it's learning from how you use your computer. And it learns sort of like when you give the dog a treat and you can make it bark. It's kind of doing that to you. It's saying it's, it's monitoring your behavior and says every time the user does this, they also do that. You may not even realize you do this but it will, and it'll realize it very quickly. And it'll say, well, the user just did this. That means now the next thing they're gonna do is that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just queue that up and get it ready. And then you click that and it's already there. And you'll be like, that's the fastest computer I've ever seen in my life. How fast is that? And I'll be like, oh, that's uh, one gigahertz. I got a six gigahertz that doesn't run that fast. Yeah, we're not doing it that way anymore. So this is going to blow your mind. So I can't wait to see how people run benchmarks on it because it won't make any sense. How do you benchmark human behavior? It, it, it'll, as far as I can tell, it's going to be virtually worthless, any benchmark numbers that simulate human behavior. And it'll blow your mind. And we're getting there. We are just now starting. Right now, all of the artificial intelligence, artificial learning happens in Big rooms, it's not stuff you or I can buy. Like Tesla's self-driving cars, they don't, the cars don't learn. Back, back home at Tesla headquarters is where they've got their AI learning system. And they're developing their own custom one. They're just using graphics cards right now. But uh, they're going to tune that, use their own chip called Dojo. And so all the camera footage that comes back from Tesla cars is used to train uh, and auto learn the best way to handle situations. And then those things it's learned are then forwarded onto the cars to follow those instructions. But it's going to get to the point where that stuff that's in the big machines and the corporations will be in your home computer. Might be a couple of years. Like I said, we're just starting now. It just stuff ramps up quick. So it might be here sooner than you think. It's kind of exciting. It changes everything you think you know. It just resets it. It says we're redefining what a computer is and how it works. I can't wait. Kind of wish I was working at Google with their TPUs or uh, at Tesla in the uh, AI learning uh, equipment because that's, that's the future today. Andy says, try saying slancha in a Northern Irish accent. <laughs> that was my Northern Irish accent. <laughs> uh, 
Edward said he's got one profile running Windows 10. Desktop's been working for several years. He logs into Gmail and Google. There are some other suggestions here in the chat that I would advise you to take a look at, see if they apply. Martin says an FP or GPU didn't change the world. Yeah, 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 they did. They certainly did. GPUs were the more or less foundation upon which cryptocurrency was built on. When we start dealing with ASICs uh, type processors, processors that are designed to not do everything, they do one thing extremely well. Uh, there's a reason why there was a big shortage of GPUs and almost there almost still is these days. And they're not ideal for things like cryptocurrency and for AI learning, but they're better than anything else we have right now. And I would say that's world changing. The ability that we can offload that task from the CPU changed games forever on the PC. And without which we wouldn't have anything near what we have today. So I will uh, politely disagree with your view because you don't know a world without it. And I think you're a little entitled to think it didn't change the world. I would say, in fact, it did. It changed the world quite significantly. And that change by comparison is nothing. But you'll see. You'll see. The future is the future. It's not because of what I say. I'm just telling you what's coming. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's okay. And you don't have to like it. The future comes whether you like it or not. Will you be prepared or will you be ignorant of it? That's your choice. I'm excited to see it. It's going to massively change what you know. And to dismiss it so flippantly is at your own demise. But that's okay. You're, you're totally allowed. Hey, there's a storm coming. You need to get out of town. No, we're staying. Okay, we'll get your bodies later. All right, guys. I think... I think we're all done. So Amazon also sells these uh, minis for them. You might check there if they're sold out at the main site. Bruce wants to know if there's any reason to upgrade to Windows 11 if you're running Windows 10. Um, not until maybe this time next year. Um, you'd have to tell me. I can't tell you if you have a reason to upgrade. If you can't tell me a reason, you've answered your own question. But you want to put a supported operating system on your computer at all times. And Windows 10 support ends on October 14th of 2025. Now, there's some discussion of Microsoft selling additional support at a cost. However, the prices haven't been announced. It may not be affordable. And uh, if you just go to Windows 11, you won't have to incur those fees. However, October 14th of 2025 is a year and a half away. And I don't really talk about stuff to like to be, to get into the details of exactly what you need to be ready for a year and a half from now. I could be dead a year and a half from now. So that's a little too far ahead of planning in my world. However, for my business clients that are all running Windows 10, they don't like Windows 11. And we don't want to put them on it unless we have to. And the point where we reach where we have to will be approximately the summer of 2025. So not this summer, not this fall, not this coming winter, not next spring after this spring, but the summer after this upcoming summer, when I will be about two years older than I am right now, that is when I will be upgrading my clients to Windows 11. Now, some clients have ordered computers from other sources that came with Windows 11 on them. Do I recommend they downgrade them to Windows 10? No. No, not. They're going to get used to it. It's just different. You got to get used to it. Windows 11 is not worth upgrading to, and Windows 11 is not worth downgrading from. It is essentially Windows 10 with a different skin on it. That's more or less all it is. So the inconvenience of having things moved around and the fonts look different, the icons look different, really gets under the skin of users that were comfortable with what they had. So at the end of the day, 
If you want to put Windows 11 on, go ahead. If you don't want to put Windows 11 on, then don't. <laughs> it really doesn't make a difference until October of 2025. As far as I know, there is nothing Windows 11 can do that you're not able to do in Windows 10. So unless you can tell me something that you can do in Windows 11, I can't see why, or rather that you can do in Windows 11, but you cannot do it in Windows 10. Can anybody name one thing? Easy Otter said, change is hard for me. Well, then you don't want a computer because the one thing constant in the tech industry is constant change. I've been pivoting in my business since I started. If I didn't pivot, I'd have been out of business in the 90s. If I didn't pivot again, I'd be out of business in the early 2000s. If I didn't pivot again, I'd have been out of business in the mid 2010s. And if I didn't, I'm getting ready to pivot again. I wasn't installing any liquid coolers and RGB lighting and doing all that cable management nonsense. That didn't exist for the first 20 years I was in business. You understand that, right? There wasn't such a thing. But if I wanted to stay in business, I had to adopt it. Many PCs did not exist, at least nothing that was worth having. So you've got to keep an open mind. If you, were, if you enjoy this, it should be part of the fun. If it's a burden because you don't like change, maybe just use a phone or a tablet. I mean, they'll still change too, but it's less drastic. <clears throat> Easy Otter said he started with Web TV. Yeah, Web TV was around a long time. I think at least 10, 15 years, if I recall. Mark Andrews said the one thing that Windows 10 does over Windows 11 is it adds a 1 to the 10. No, that's, that's not what Windows 10 does over Windows 11. That's what Windows 11 does over Windows 10. But I, I see what you were trying to say there. Ah, uh, let's see. What else do we have going in the chat? Um, Paul O'Brien, please do not remove Edward's messages. I don't know why you're doing that. It's very uh, unjustified and rude. And I will remove your blue status if you will not exercise discretion with the power that you have. There's nothing Edward has said against the rules. Edward is looking for help. And if you do that, Paul, I'm going to remove the ability for you to do that. So I'm asking you, unless you see profanity, do not ban anybody. Because these are my viewers. And you are basically kicking people out of my store without my consent and causing me a loss of business. So please have a little consideration for me. If I trust you with that power, please do not um, make me regret trusting you. We don't do that here. With great power comes great responsibility. You need restraint. If you cannot have impulse control, it will be removed. So I'm asking, and if that doesn't work, you know what's next. I appreciate you, my friend. You might be looking out for me, but you're actually causing me a lot of damage right now. Please stop. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ben Laird says Windows 11's been running great for him. It's one of those things. You know, some people like it. Most people don't. If you just look at the, you know, how many Windows 10 installs are running right now worldwide versus how many 11s, you'll see you're in a very small minority. It's not even close. But that's okay. That doesn't make you wrong. It's just not the uh, feeling of most computer users, right or wrong, right? It's just most people do not like Windows 11 and prefer Windows 10. And that you can see that from the installation numbers. And uh, Microsoft hates that. Microsoft wants Windows 11 to have the majority market share. And they're trying to force people to like it.
Paul O'Brien said he, did, he didn't mean to delete messages. Paul, don't take it personally. If you are accidentally deleting messages, I'm removing your ability to do that until you can have control of your computer. These kind of mistakes cost me my viewers and they hurt my channel. So if you have the ability to inadvertently start randomly deleting people's messages until you gain control back, I'm simply going to revoke that from you for right now. When you're better and you're at home and you're back in control, we'll put it back on for you, okay? We, I, these kind of mistakes cannot happen on a live channel. Please understand that. It's not an excuse. You cannot do it. No, you cannot give me an excuse for doing that. It's unacceptable. All right? But I'm not mad at you. I understand you're in a situation. When you're in that situation, and this can happen because when you're out of the situation, we'll put it back. And my apologies to Edward that that happened to you. You didn't do anything wrong. And um, hopefully you'll continue getting help here in the uh, chat room. And of course, we hope you get better soon. Edward should be able to chat if you want to type something, Edward, just to make sure that I've undone the damage caused by Paul O'Brien. I want to make sure that you're, you're okay. There it is. Okay, Edward's there. Okay, guys, so if you'd like, you can hang around in the chat room if you guys want to continue to uh, help Edward. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. And um, the other thing, Edward, is our friend Doug Betts over at Live Windows Training with Doug Betts. He does a half an hour show every day where he will work with you on your problem while he's live. He doesn't do it privately for free, but he will do it publicly for free. And if you look up uh, Live Windows Training with Doug, D-O-U-G, Betts, B-E-T-T-S, every, pretty much every weekday for half an hour, he is live. You can also send him an email, and this is a service he provides for free. So if you can't be there live, he'll read your email and give you some suggestions. If you can be there live, um, then he and his community can dedicate that whole half hour to helping you potentially, if that's what it takes. And usually they can solve problems a lot faster than that. Unfortunately, um, th that question is a little bit more in depth than what we can do today as we're running out of time. And the purpose of today's video was of course the video review, but, um, we certainly do like to help our viewers anytime if, if we can with any technical issues they may be having. And we hope that uh, you'll come back again and see us and follow up with us. If you get it resolved, let us know what fixed it. And if you want to hang out in the chat after this video is over, uh, if folks want to continue helping you here in the chat room, that's, that's certainly welcome from all of you. And my thanks to this amazing community we have. Thank you for all of the contributions and support. Uh, Peter Laycock, Frankie B, uh, Planet Cryos. Planet Cryos has a YouTube channel, although he's not doing questions and answers, but he does some really cool reviews. And a shout out and a thank you to um, Mark Gaines, of course, and And NetFreak, thank you for your $10 Amazon gift card. Kelly Stewart, we hope you're going to feel better soon. And thank you for the Amazon gift card. And, of course, in the uh, Super Chats today, everybody who has contributed, it all adds up, folks. And these, the, 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 the financial status of me going on Amazon to buy stuff is only regulated by how much I have to spend, right? So we've got a couple of cases to review, but no parts to put in them yet. So I'm sort of yeah, thinking what I want to put together. If you have some ideas of what you want to see built, that's not a repeat of something I've already done, maybe an unusual motherboard or an unusual processor that you haven't seen many other people do. Yeah, leave it in the comments. Let me know. That's how we found the live mixer board, which was just crazy cool. I'd love to find something cool that isn't just the same old same old because i'm getting kind of bored of it 
something a little unusual with regards to the motherboard is preferred. And then when it comes to processors, I don't think there's anything unusual out there, but primarily the main board is what I'm interested in. And if there's a, a main board build that you want to see done, let me know what it is and why you want to see it. Because I'm just looking for something different, something less repetitive on these next couple of builds. Oystein, thank you as always, my friend. He posts a link to Doug Betts' channel in our chat room. Thank you for doing that. And Oystein is a frequent contributor here, watching us from Norway. And oh, I was going to check. Oh, I know what I was going to check. Super Chats. Uh, Mark Gaines contributed a five pound Super Chat as well as the uh, PayPal amount. Planet Cryos with several Super Chats. And that's as far back as it goes. So I think that's all there was. And again, check out Planet Cryos' YouTube channel as well. His videos don't run anywhere near as long as mine. They're not live. But he reviews a lot of the same stuff or related stuff and he does a great job at it so be sure and check him out and be sure and check out doug betts as well we've certainly had doug betts here on the channel a couple of times and and like me he's been in the industry over 30 years and knows a thing or two about it so when you're asking for help instead of asking some stranger online it feels good to ask somebody who's actually in the industry with decades of experience there aren't many of us sharing our knowledge on youtube and I wish that wasn't the case. However, that's also why I do what I do. If everybody was doing it, I'd have to find something else to do. But uh, that'll wrap it up for me for today. My thanks to the folks at Minis Forum. And of course, to Marlena, our channel administrator here, who takes care of a lot of the paperwork, let's just say, a lot of the administrative work and uh, monitoring the chat room and doing the thumbnails and the video notes and uh, being the liaison between me and some communication with uh, random viewers that write in that I don't normally hear from and um, potential sponsors. Yeah, so she's helped lifted the burden off of me so I can focus on this part. And she's doing an amazing job. And, you know, credit where credit is due is what I say. And, of course, thanks to all of you and all the members, everybody in blue. And if you're just hanging out in the chat, chatting with us, thank you. Participating is a form of uh, contribution, and I appreciate that very, very much. That'll wrap it up for me for today. Happy birthday to, was it Mats Olav's birthday? Who was it? Mats Olav and Mitch, Mo Mitch Morrison. I cannot get the words. M -m 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 Mitch M -m 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 Morrison. <laughs> and anybody else who's having a birthday today, March 5th. Happy birthday. I'll see you all very, very soon. And until next time, bye for now.